To test for pain in the patellofemoral compartment, there are a few techniques. One is to do uh, active patellar compression. What we do is I push on the patient's patella and then I ask her to extend her leg. If that causes pain any time during the extension, then that constitutes a positive test. Uh, a much more sensitive but aggressive way of doing this is to um, make it passive. So instead of having the patient direct the movement, I direct the movement, and then while I'm doing this, I try to feel for creptus beneath the knee. To test for injury to the medial collateral ligament, one can first appreciate the medial, uh, medial condyle of the femur. Tenderness there suggests injury as the, the MCL crosses the joint line. What, what one does then is one holds the leg not in complete extension because the knee capsule will actually offer some ligament to support okay, to, uh, to, medial, to medial collateral opening. So we flex to about 15 degrees and then we apply a valgus stress to the knee and we see if there's any give. A very, very slight give can be normal but anything more than that represents injury. Uh, tenderness during the exam is also suggestive injury. Same as the medial ligament, the lateral, the lateral collateral ligament is also tested with the knee in about 15 degrees of extension, applying this time a varus force. Again, a little bit of give, perhaps a little bit more than the MCL is normal, but anything more than that or tenderness with the test suggests injury. All meniscal tests have essentially the same principle, which is when the knee is in full extension, the femur and the tibia don't have any ability to rotate relative to one another. When the knee is slightly flexed, then there's a little bit of rotation allowed between the femur and the tibia. The goal of these tests is to allow for rotation, to rotate slightly, to then lean in, to apply a varus or valgus force to compress one of the ligaments, and then as the knee is straightened, it will cause the femur and tibia to rotate towards each other and compress the ligament that's then been trapped. The Festig test involves having the patient stand on one leg and then very gently bend the knee first about five degrees and then rotate towards either the medial side for the medial, cloud, for the medial meniscus or to the lateral side for the lateral meniscus. Once that rotation is done, you have them then stand fully extend the knee, so they flex, turn, and then extend. If that recreates pain along the joint line, then that's suggestive of a positive test. To perform Apley's test, which is another meniscal test, one extends, takes the extended leg and flexes it to 90 degrees. Then the examiner takes his knee, or her knee, and braces the patient's thigh down against the exam table. For the first part of the test, the distraction portion, one it pulls up, applies axial, uh, an axial load, sorry, an axial draw on the on the, the tibia, and then externally, internally rotates the foot. This should cause no pain. If the patient complains of pain at this test, during this portion of the test, the test is disregarded and considered to be unreliable. The patient very may very well still have a meniscal injury, but the test is no longer considered reliable, and so is abandoned. So we begin, pull up, externally rotate, internally rotate, assess for reliability. If there's no pain there, then we move on to the second part of the test, which is compression. I didn't apply a compression. If I externally rotate the foot and the patient complains of medial joint pain, then that's consistent with a medial meniscus injury. If I you know, internally rotate the leg and the patient complains of lateral joint pain, that's consistent with a lateral meniscus injury. To examine patella tracking, notice how the patella moves while extending the leg. The patella should move just proximally and then the last moment a little bit laterally as the knee locks. If the patella moves in any other way, laterally, medially, during extension, that's considered abnormal. So patella moves and then the last little bit moves laterally. We'll look at that one more time.
where the patella is high in the thigh. That's known as patella alta, high patella. There are a number of causes, but the most important one, and the one that you should never miss, is that of a quadricep or extensor mechanism tear. If the patient is unable to lift her or his leg off the table, lift, like that, if the patient is unable to do that in the setting of a high, a high patella and a sulcus between the patella and the, and, and the tibial tuberosity, that suggests an extensor mechanism tear uh, and it's an orthopedic surgery emergency. Another test is to isolate the sartorius. A patient can have pain with extension. An easy way to determine whether or not the pain is from the rectus femoris and the quadriceps or from the sartorius, which is from the ASIS all the way down to the pes cancerinus, is to have the patient externally rotate the limb and then lift it up. If the patient can lift the limb in external rotation without pain, or if pain is provoked by external rotation with, with, with flexion, but is alleviated when one internally rotates the leg and then extends with flexes the hip, that suggests sartorius injury.